Welcome to Praying the Psalms. I'm Alan Hood, and we are in Psalm 110, verse 1. Now, some of you are going, please, let's get to verse 2. But, beloved, we move so fast through the Word of God that we don't stop to think of all the implications of a word or of a phrase or of a verse. Let's read verse 1. The Lord, Yahweh, said to my Lord, Adonai, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Do you know how many implications there are to Yahweh talking to my Adonai, to a heavenly coronation of a Messiah who's Davidic, divine, who's going to sit at his right hand till all his enemies are made a footstool? I mean, we, we could look at just the word Yahweh and what it means to be the covenant-keeping God. Adonai, Davidic, divine, sitting at the right hand. We're looking at the characteristics or what it signifies to sit at the right hand of God. Or who is his enemies? What does it mean to be made a footstool underneath his feet? All these things have to be looked at and impact our lives of prayer. You say, Alan, why are you doing this? Because I want you to take rich theology so that you can have informed intercession. Philippians prays that we might, our love may abound, that we might discern the excellent things, the highest things, that we might have a more informed, discerning love. And that's what I want us to do. I want our prayers to be informed. Because James says that many people pray, but they pray amiss. They pray their desires. They don't pray the will of God. And so we have to know the will of God in the word. And so here we are today looking again at verse one, the second phrase, sit at my right hand. So today, Messiah is seated and he's seated at the right hand. David is seeing the heavenly coronation of Messiah. We know that because Acts chapter 2 tells us that Peter's first sermon, that David didn't ascend into heaven, but Jesus did and is seated at the right hand of Yahweh in heavenly places. Tells us that all that, that all through the New Testament is very clear on that point. And so we looked at last week what the right hand signifies. And the first thing it signifies is that place of intimacy. Jesus died on the cross and therefore God exalted him to the right hand. Jesus displayed the Father's love perfectly at the cross, and therefore he was given the name above every name, that the name of Jesus, every knee bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And it says every knee under the earth, on the earth, and in heaven, every knee will bow before King Jesus, our brother and our king. Well, today I want us to look at the second thing that the right hand of God signifies, which is not just proximity or intimacy, closeness. Last week we felt that, and hopefully you've been meditating on that this week, how close you have been brought near. Beloved, well, you can't be brought any closer than the right hand of the Father seated on the throne of God with Christ Jesus. You can't be brought any closer. This is unbelievable truth. So it's proximity but it's also power. The right hand of God signifies his power. You remember what it says of the Exodus, I brought you out of Egypt with a strong arm. His strong arm. When you study the right hand of God throughout the Bible, it is the exercise of his sovereign power, his omnipotence. Nothing can stop him. In fact, Isaiah 27, if you study Isaiah, Isaiah 24 to 27 is what we call the little apocalypse. It is about the second coming of Jesus, his millennial reign. In Isaiah 27, at the climax, it's this statement about Leviathan and that he's going to slay Leviathan, that twisted serpent. And around verse 5, he does this amazing thing. God says, oh, I wish I had someone that would grab my right arm. <laughs> I wish somebody would grab it. I wish somebody would lay hold of me because if they did, they would certainly make peace with that arm. 
See, God is a warrior too. <laughs> he is the mighty one of Jacob. He's the warrior. He has strength and power and no one can restrain his arm, his hand when it moves. Who can restrain my hand when it moves? The Lord said. Who can stop me? All the nations of the, of the earth are but a drop in the bucket. They're nothing. They're less than nothing. Princes and kings are here today and they're gone tomorrow. That seated at the right hand means that Jesus has all the resource of the Father at his disposal. Perfect proximity and intimacy and perfect power. Beloved, this is outstanding news. In fact, the New Testament tells us very clearly, I'm going to read in Ephesians 1 about this power. And I hope it encourages you in this prayer of Paul, he says, which he says, the incomparably great power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. There it is. Psalm 110, 1 interpreted as heaven, heavenly places. Here it is, the power far above all principality and power, might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but that, the age to come. He has power over all things in this age, all things in the age to come. And also we find out in 1 Peter 3, 22, it says, Jesus, who has gone into heaven, and is at the right hand of God, there, Psalm 110 again, Angels and authorities and powers have been made subject to him. Do you see it, beloved? This is unbelievable. And I want to connect the dots here for you as you enter into prayer because there's a twofold shock to the incarnation. Can you imagine when God the Son, the eternal Son, the beloved of the Father, became a man? says in 1 Peter 1.12 that angels long to look into these things. How could God, mighty God, wonder of a counselor, everlasting father, become a little seven-pound, 21-inch baby or however big he was? Can you imagine how angels were shocked? The beloved, that wasn't the only shocking thing. You want to know what another shocking thing was? When a man came out of the grave on the third day and then ascended into heaven. For the first time, a man comes out of the grave and it says that Jesus ascended through the second heavens, not just God, but as a resurrected man. He had his body, he said, here, touch me, feel me, feed me, I'm a man. The same Jesus, the angel said, that rose up will come down one day. The same Jesus. Jesus said, it's I. It's me. Handle me. Touch me. Put your finger here, your hand here. He still had scars. Beloved, in this glorified human resurrected body, he ascended. And do you understand what happened on that day when a man went through the second heavens, not just God, but as a man put powers and principalities under his feet, dominion, spiritual hosts of darkness, Satan. He goes through the second heavens, defeats. Those powers cannot stop him from ascending. He walks through the gate of the new Jerusalem, not one defiling thing winter. As a man, he enters in with a resurrected, perfect human body, glorified human body. He walks into the throne room and as a man who is God, sits on God's throne. Do you have any idea what that means for your life today? at the right hand of the Father, a glorified human being who's fully God is seated there. Do you know what that means today, beloved? We made it. <laughs> oh, humanity made it. There is no doubt that humanity will make it because in the throne room, of God Almighty who was and is and is to come, 
a man is seated at the right hand of the glory. And you know what the Bible says? You and I are seated there with him. Because a man seated there, he brings all of humanity who trust in him and sits them there. Beloved, Satan has gotten your eyes off of God and onto you and your weakness and your issues. Beloved, set your eyes, your heart and mind on things above. Colossians 3 says, where Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father and you're seated there too. And put on Christ. Take your place. Beloved, do you have any idea today whom you worship? Do you have any idea who you pray to? And do you have any idea who you're seated there with? We talk about the incarnation. Have you thought on the ascension today? Because Psalm 110 is the ascension. Where Jesus takes in the train of his robe as he ascends through the second heavens and enters the new Jerusalem and takes his seat on that throne he brings, and it says, he gives men as gifts to the Father. He brings us in the train of his robe and presents us to the Father. Seated at the right hand, intimacy, proximity, closeness, love, and power. Today, when you pray, remember where you're praying from seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. It's good news, beloved. We made it. <laughs> because of our brother, our king, our God, Jesus Christ. Love him today. Worship him. You just should praise the rest of the day. You ought to run around your house just screaming your head off the good news that Jesus has ascended. A glorified human body seated at the right hand of God, and you're seated there with him. Good news, I tell you.